guys and welcome back to my channel so today we are going to be talking about the properties of water things that you need to know if you are doing as and a level biology and you want to do well in it so let's get started and also make sure to like and subscribe if you like this video and want more videos like this because that would be awesome so let's go Liquid at room temperature. So water is liquid at room temperature. This is because the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules make it more difficult for the molecules to break away and become its gas, phase, gas state. And as a result of the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules, that means water is liquid at room temperature. Because water is liquid at room temperature, because in because in terms of like types of questions that you are asked in the exam, they'll always say or oh, link it into context to normally like aquatic animals or these types of animals. Basically, yeah, to like aquatic or organisms really. So you really need to be able to state it, state why water does have this property, but how it links to um aquatic animals or to organ to live in organisms that's what you need to know so because water is liquid at room temperature it provides a habitat for aquatic animals in ponds rivers and lakes it is a good and effective transport system and is a major component of tissues in living in living organisms so you need to know that ice is less dense than water so until about four degrees water gets denser but from four degrees to its freezing point the water molecules kind of spread out and align themselves to form a crystal lattice and that makes ice less dense than water and because ice is less dense than water Bodies of waters such as ponds, lakes, rivers, you know, those type of stuff are insulated against extreme cold conditions. So ice kind of acts as an insulating layer. And because ice acts as an insulating layer, that means that the water beneath the ice is liquid and it's not frozen. And therefore aquatic animals like fishes, and any other sort of aquatic organisms that you know live in water um they can still swim and not freeze so yeah you need to again i said as my previous one i said you need to know why like what makes ice less dense than water which is the fact that the water molecules spread out and form a crystal lattice make sure that is in your head and also you need to link it to context to whatever the question is saying so most of the time it's going to be to like aquatic animals or to organisms or whatever just link it so here i've linked it to aquatic animal aquatic organisms by saying oh they do not freeze because the water below below the ice does not freeze it is an ins it insulates them it's insulating layer all those type of stuff so always remember that Water as a solvent. So water is a good solvent and because water is a dipolar or just polar molecule, when ionic solutes and covalent solutes mix with water, the slightly positive parts of the water uh, molecule, so the hydrogen atoms, they cluster around them and they are attracted to the negative parts of the, of the solute molecule of the ion to the negative charged part of the iron yeah because opposite yeah because opposite attracts yeah and the slight negative part of the water which is the oxygen atom clusters around the positive parts of the solute molecules or the positively charged ions as you know and that kind of like dissociates the ions and keeps them separate and apart from each other so that is what we call as you know ions like sodium chloride dissolving in water and it then forms a solution when something dissolves in water it forms a solution so yeah carrying on so because water is an effective and good solvent it is a good transport medium so ions and molecules 
can be transported while still being dissolved in water. Glucose, for an example, it is soluble, it dissolves in water. So the fact that uh, water is a solvent and glucose is a solute, then glucose can be easily transported through the body to different cells, to the muscle cells, for an example. Irons as well. And talking about irons, this is very good. This is a very good idea for you to know examples of irons, of inorganic irons, because you do, I'm sure you do learn that in the uh, in biology, I know I learned it in biology, ASA level, OCR, I'm sure you do it in your other other examples that you may do. Um, it's just very good idea to know about nitrates. Well, to know, yeah, to know about nitrates and phosphates, to know that living organisms need that. So the fact that they are soluble in water and that water is a solvent, it's just easier for living organisms to just take it in. Get what I mean? And yeah, um, because uh, water is a good solvent, it's a good provides a good medium for reactions. And another thing that I feel like is also a reason why would you say no? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Another point is that water, because water is a good solvent, water can dilute toxic substances. Think of chemistry, think of the hydrochloric acid, think of the high um, the sulfuric acids when they say, oh, dilute hydrochloric acid, they've just literally just added water to it, basically, and diluted it. So good solvents dilute toxic substances. Just think of that. Yeah. So, yeah. so cohesion and surface structure. Because of water's polar nature, it has, so the oxygen is slightly negative and the hydrogen atoms are slightly positive. Um, water molecules can form hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. So if you, in my previous slide, I put um, that water is a brackets dipolar molecule. The reason why it's dipolar is because a a oxygen atom can form two hydrogen bonds. No, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Water can form two hydrogen bonds with each other, basically. And this is all due to because oxygen has two lone pairs, but that's for chemistry. So just know, if even if you don't say dipolar, if you just say polar, they will still give you the marks for it because it is true, but yeah. Um, because of these hydrogen bonds, the water molecules stick together and are attracted to each other. This is what we call adhesion. So because of the hydrogen bonds that are between the water molecules, this means that the water molecules stick, stick close together. So they stick with each other and they are attracted to each other. So that's what you call... Um, yeah, that's, that's what... Co cohesion is in terms of water and in terms of just cohesion to be honest and because water is cohesive cohesive um xylem vessels in plants can draw up water water well columns of water against gravity in a continuous stream so that's an example that you can have ingrained in the back of your head continuing so at the interface of between water and air, the molecule, the water molecules at the surface of water are more attracted to the water molecules beneath them than the molecules in the air. So basically, if you don't get what that means, so at the surface of the water, you have water beneath. So at the surface, yeah. So at the surface, um, you have you know the air at the top, and then you have the water molecules beneath. So what I'm saying here is that the water molecules that are on the surface of the water, they are more attracted to the water molecules beneath them than the air molecules above. And this is as a result of cohesion, which is all due to hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. Remember that. So because the attraction 
uh, between the water molecules beneath is stronger than the attraction between the, the air molecules, that means that the water molecules on the surface will be attracted more to the water molecules beneath. So that means that the water molecules on the surface will be pulled inwards, like pulled inwards and pulled inwards and towards the molecule, the water molecules beneath. I'm saying water molecules like so many times. And this causes the surface of the water to be put under tension because the water molecules at the surface of the water are being pulled inwards and attracted to the ones beneath. Remember that. And this is what we call surface tension, which creates a thin skin of water that is difficult to break through. And surface tension provides, we need to link it to context, to, to living organisms, because we need to link it. So surface tension provides a habitat for pond skaters, for an example, that's a type of insect and other insects. I also... Oh, and also some, I know that some um, live in, this is a bit, a little bit off topic, but I do know that, I think there's a lizard that also like skates on water. I mean, he walks, <laughs> walks on water or runs on water. So not just insects, also bigger organisms as well. So yeah. Adhesion. So this is where the water molecules stick to and are attracted to other molecules. So when water is surrounded by charged or polar surfaces, you can see its adhesive property. So for an example, when you put a narrow polar tube in water, you can see that water is being sucked up the tube against gravity. And think of xylem vessels as well. Because of water's adhesive property, water is attracted to the size of the xylem vessels, as you can see in that picture as what well, that picture here on the slide. And as this is as a result of the hydrogen bond. And because of water's cohesive and adhesive property, water can be drawn up to xylem against gravity easily. Again, I linked it. I gave an example. Yeah. High specific heat capacity. So water has a high specific heat capacity. So that literally means that a lot of heat energy is needed to just raise the temperature, the temperature of one kilogram of water by one degrees. This is all because of the hydrogen bonds. It's like high, it's literally like hydrogen bonds for all of them, literally. So this is because of the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules, which hold the molecules quite tightly together. So a lot of energy is needed. And as a result of water's high specific heat capacity, this creates a firmly stable environment for aquatic animals and it creates a stable temperature for enzymes and metabolic reactions to occur properly and for enzymes to do its function, those type of stuff. High latent heat capacity. So water having a high latent heat capacity literally just means that a large amount of energy is needed to change the physical state of water from liquid to gas, literally. And again, this is all this is all because of the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. As you need to break the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules for water to change state. When when water evaporates, it creates a cooling mechanism. Remember that one. That one is, I should have put that one in bold so, so that you can remember because that is one of the things that examiners are actually looking for. And also remember examples. Examples are so important. So examples of this is sweating. Yeah. <laughs> Metabolic. So... Water is is a is metabolic. Is it a metab yeah, it's metabolic. And water is used to No, water is used in metabolic reactions. Yeah. <laughs> and water is used to 
break bonds in hydrolysis reactions and make bonds in condensation reactions. So examples of hydrolysis reactions uh, include like digestions of lipids, starts, proteins, and then condensation is synthesis of proteins, lipid, uh, well, glycerol and fatty acids, and glucose. And water is also used as a reactant in photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide plus water. Is it? Carbon oh, shoot. Carbon dioxide plus water to oxygen plus glucose. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so transparency. You, this is an extra one. And also, I, I have seen examples give you a mark for this. So something as simple as this can get you the mark. The fact that water is transparent means that light can pass through water so that aquatic animal aqu animals so that aquatic plants can photosynthesize literally that's your two marks three marks there two marks i'd say worth maybe two two marks yeah literally just talk about transparency literally and thank you guys for watching yeah so that is it for the video and i hope you guys really enjoy it and make sure to like and subscribe before more videos like this i've been posting like every day so she's actually pretty good <laughs> anyway have have a good day have a good night good morning and whatever time of the day you're watching it and yeah make sure to like and subscribe before more videos like this and bye